So what I was thinking is, we'll do this over here. Okay, do you like, if we try, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm so sorry. Oh, I was late. I had to get Pastor Keith some energy totally drinks. That's totally fine. We were, we were just going over the sports Did segment. you get my note? Okay, we're thank live. you, thank you. Five, oh, okay, thanks, Reverend. Four, thanks, Reverend. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome back to the In Between's special series, Advent Investigated, Angelic Appearances of Christmas. We've been taking a closer look at the angelic messengers sent to announce the birth of Jesus. Up to this point in history, there hadn't been any recorded angelic messengers in the Bible in nearly 600 years. As we've seen throughout this series, the news they brought was miraculous. God's promise to send a savior into the world was coming true. The wait was over. The promised savior was here. Our time traveling reporter has been on the scene first with Mary, a young woman from the town of Nazareth who was visited by the messenger angel Gabriel. His news, she would give birth to a son, more specifically, the son of God. Next, our reporter visited Joseph, the man engaged to Mary. Joseph was also visited by an angel who told him to marry her and assured him that the baby growing inside Mary was indeed a gift from the Holy Spirit. Sandra Dubois, our time traveling reporter, then visited some shepherds who had been visited by not just one, but an entire army of angels when Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem. After some time had passed, Mary and Joseph were back in Bethlehem with the baby Jesus when they were visited by three magi or wise men from the east. Let's go live now to Bethlehem where our time traveling reporter is on the scene with one of those wise men now. Thanks, Jeff. I'm here in Nazareth outside the humble home of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus with Caspar, a magi from the eastern region of Persia. Casper, you have traveled a long way to Nazareth. Tell us, what have you come in search of? My fellow astronomers and I have been studying the movement of stars and planetary alignments for a very long time. Recently, we saw a star rise that we hadn't seen before. Its significance led us to believe that it had risen in a specific location to announce the birth of a king, a mighty ruler. Wow, that's incredible. I didn't realize stars had that much significance. That's what my fellow Magi and I believe. We traveled a great distance to see if it was true. When we arrived in Jerusalem, King Herod heard about our quest and asked to see us. What happened when you visited King Herod? We told him we had come to worship the one who was born King of the Jews. He seemed very interested in this and asked us many questions about the signs we had seen. He sent us on our way to find this newborn king, but told us to come back once we had found him so that Herod himself could go and worship this king. Fascinating. Uh, so what happened after you left Herod? The most remarkable thing. The star we had seen rose and went ahead of us until it stopped over the very place where the child was. He was right inside. We worshiped him and presented him with gifts fit for a king gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The star led you to the baby Jesus. That is just incredible. Well, and now that you've completed your mission, what will you do? We had planned to return through Jerusalem and tell Herod what we had found. But in the night while I was sleeping, the most incredible thing happened. I was warned by an angel of the Lord not to return to Herod, but to take a different route. So that's what we're going to do. You'll have to excuse me, but I need to catch up with the others. They've already started on the journey. Uh, all right. Uh, well, my goodness. Visited by an angel in a dream. That's yet another angelic messenger that the Lord sent. My goodness. Uh, oh, Joseph, I, I didn't expect to see you. What are you doing? Are you all right? Oh, hello, Sandra. Were you talking with Casper? Did he tell you what happened to him? Uh, yes, he did. He told me he had been warned by an angel in a dream to stay away from Herod and return home a different way. Well, you're not gonna believe this, but an angel of the Lord visited me in a dream again too. Really? Well, do you have time? Tell us what happened. Well, just now I was sleeping and an angel appeared to me and said, get up, take Jesus and Mary and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Kill him? What? Why? I thought Jesus was the savior of the world. Who would want to kill him? Well, I think it's more complicated than that. 
Remember, the angel told us that Jesus was going to be the king? I don't think Herod liked that. And when the wise men told Herod that they were looking for the one who was born king of the Jews, Herod took that as a threat to his power. Uh, I have to hurry now, Sandra. The angel told me to leave immediately, so that's what I'm doing. We've learned that when these angelic messengers show up, it's big news, and we've got to listen. Oh, oh, all right. My goodness. Well, as you can see, Joseph has taken his family to flee in the middle of the night to safety. Jeff, Claire, I hope you can help our viewers make sense of what is happening with Herod. Back to you. Thanks, Sandra. You know, it is just horrible that Joseph had to pack up his family in the middle of the night. That just shows how important Jesus' birth was. King Jesus is such a big deal that even a grown king was afraid of his power. God sent an angelic messenger in the middle of the night to warn the wise men and Joseph of how dangerous Herod was. Why, why, Jeff, do you think that Herod was threatened by a baby? That's a great question, Claire. Herod was in power in Jerusalem and Judea. He was the king in that region or area. Though not Jewish himself, because he was in power in a Jewish area, he was known as the king of the Jews. So when the Magi showed up and said that they had come to worship the king of the Jews, he must have been confused and then realized the threat. Exactly. They weren't there to worship him. They were looking for the one born king of the Jews. They were looking for Jesus. When Herod realized that these wise men who had traveled a huge distance were looking for a different king, he wanted to put a stop to it right away. Herod told the wise men that he wanted them to find this king and come back to tell him where he was. Not because he himself wanted to worship the new king. He wanted to eliminate the new king by killing him. That's right. And God protected Jesus and his family. Now, this shouldn't surprise us. After all the angelic appearances we have seen so far, we know that this event is a huge deal. God wasn't going to let anything happen to his son. So he sent two more angels to give warnings to help protect Jesus. This is all pretty remarkable. And we know from the Bible that Jesus was protected from King Herod and did grow up and then die on the cross for our sins. Just like God had planned all along, everything God said would come true about Jesus' birth became true. That's right, Claire. God used a lot of different people to bring about what we know now as the Christmas story. And some of the significant beings he used were angels, his very own messengers, to make sure it all happened just as he said it would. God took great care to make sure that Jesus' birth happened just the way it did. And because those promises came true in Jesus, we can trust that all other promises he has made to us will come true too. So, it is now time, one last time, to go to our special segment news desk and get to the bottom of it. Claire, seriously, three times is it enough? A fourth time? Oh yes, we're going to. Jeff, come on, it's Christmas! Right, tis the season to get to the bottom of this. Welcome once again to our special segment, Getting to the Bottom of It. Jeff, you have certainly gotten to the bottom of uh, several things. You've received as payment some excellent ornaments yeah, for your trouble. Actually, yeah, the ornaments have been nice. Yeah, did you clean all the pudding off the snowman? There is probably still some pudding on the snowman. But Great, okay. My um, dog will enjoy and the bells. Again. And then what was the other one? Uh, yeah, the nutcracker. The nutcracker. Which was and the cake. Really That's great. That's disgusting. Oh. It was tasty, though. Are you ready to see what you will be investigating and getting to the bottom of? Yeah, you've been so creative with the other ones, so I'm excited to see what this is going to be, but we also spared no expense. nervous. You don't need to nervous. be nervous. Let's see, shall we? Yes. Oh. Okay. This is a... a, a Am I looking at a wreath? Of I believe some kind? so. Yeah, you can touch can it. I touch yeah, it? you can touch it. You can pick it up. Do I eat it? I don't know. I guess you'll have to. It's cold. Oh, this is frozen. This is like a piece of ice. Oh my gosh, it is. So it is. So Should I, can I? Well, can, I don't think I, I would. Can you see what you're trying to get? 
Um, I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. Oh, goodness. I'll hold it. Do I need to... I don't know. So do I need to, like... It's starting to melt a little Ooh. bit. Should I... Do I need to melt it? I think you might have to melt this to get to the bottom of it. Okay, well... How do you want to melt it? Uh, you could sit can I make on a fire? it like a hen. Can I make a fire? You want to put a fire in our studio? Bad idea. Hold on, I've got an idea. Okay. Hold. I oh. think this could help. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. Uh, Just turn it on. Okay. There we go. So what we're trying to do is use this hand dryer <laughs> to melt this reed. And as we do this, we're gonna get to the bottom of this reed. I think this is gonna take a while. I'm gonna go get some stuff to entertain myself while you do this. You're gonna go leave me? I'm just gonna maybe get a book or something. Go over there. Jeff, wait. Safety first. Huh? Okay. okay. Here we go. This is about to go. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. here we go. Here you go, man. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Da 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 da. All right. Wow. First one. Got one. Okay. There we go now. All right there now. All right. All right. There we okay, go. Okay. Okay. Three. Two. We got to the bottom of this. Whether we chipped our way through, or burned our way through, or really hair. Did. Wow. This book, um, this one almost burned through. That is really good. So, because this was a group effort, I think I should get to keep one of these. I think you should too. High five? High five, but no cake. No, with the mitten. Oh. Mitten five. <laughs> hey, we hope you've enjoyed our series, Advent Investigated, The Angelic Appearances of Christmas. Bye guys. <laughs>